Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, it's wonderful to be here today and to be invited to talk about the Irwell Valley Wildman. As you can see from the photograph on the screen, um, this is the place where I had my encounter as a young girl. I was 15 years old at the time and I'd skip school with my friend as it was time for the mock examinations and I didn't really want to go in. So we decided that we would go to the side of this house here um, and that's what we were doing. We were there and we were just doing what young girls do, uh, giggling and rolling around and just being silly. And, um, and when I saw something out the corner of my eye and we were in, uh, it was in laurel bushes, kind of laurel and rhododendron kind of mixed with privet and it looked like the only thing i can describe it like really is it looked very much like the american bigfoot that you see uh this is a picture of the park very recently um and as you can see it's been left to grow quite overgrown but this used to be a hot house and in the hot house there was butterflies and um jungle plants and kind of food and next to that was a sensory garden and it had herbs and things like that in it and i saw what i thought at first was probably going to be a teacher or a young lad when i saw the movement in the bushes but unfortunately it wasn't what i saw looked like this he had that base its skin was a very tan leathery color um its hair doesn't really show it in the poultry i know that its hair was um a little bit longer than that and it was a very dark brown colour, but where the sun caught it, it was red. His eyes were an amberish colour and his mouth was slightly open and you could see his teeth. And they were normal teeth, like our teeth. There was nothing, no canids, nothing like that. But to me, he was a monster. It was an awful day. Um, and it set me on a path where I've gone out of my way to try and find other people that have seen him, it, you know, whatever people want to call it in the same area at the same time um and like i say it happened to me in 1982 so it's been a long time we're in 2018 now and i was 15 back then i'm 51 now i know a lot more and i know i'm not the only person that saw him and i know that i'm not the only person from this area that saw him or something very similar to him as well but back then i didn't know that back then i was on my own and i was just left with this kind of feeling of not being believed by anyone um my friend and i didn't really speak about it afterwards it was always kind of between us there and this unspoken i think i blamed her and she blamed me and she called him the gorilla man to me he was the man ape because he looked like a man and an ape combined that's the only way really i can describe him and then years and years later um i've made the map you know and people know me and my name's out there and there's a gentleman called thomas markham and he runs a wonderful blog, and it's uh, the Crypto Crew. And he was contacted by a lady named Brenda. And she said that she came uh, had an, an encounter with a very similar thing, and that was in 1984, so only two years after me. And this is what she had to say. She said she was out with her dog, and she contacted Thomas and said, I recently read your article with a lady named Deborah, you saw the Yeti-type Bigfoot creature in Beulah Park in Salford. And I wanted to get in touch because I saw the same thing in 1984 when I was 30 years old. And I was walking my dog there and it was freezing cold and I was having a cigarette. And it was dark at that time of year, about 5pm. And I thought I was alone in the park because it's usually shut then. But this particular night it was open. I was smoking when movement to my left caught my eye. There was nearby light and I saw this tall thing there. It looked about six foot tall and it was quite podgy. It had a bit of a belly on it. And what got me right away was that it was had bare feet. It was then that I noticed it was nude. It had no clothing on it, but had it did have hair all over its body. That's when I thought it must have been someone playing silly beggars. But this thing just stood there. I saw it had male genitalia, and that was when I became worried. I thought it might attack me in some way. And it stood there staring for about 20 seconds, and then turned very quickly and ran off into the trees. 
I quickly left the park and returned home. And I told my then boyfriend and his brother. But he laughed and said I must have seen a local perv trying to pick up a prostitute. I will never forget that thing. I did not know anything about Bigfoot and stuff, but that's what it must have been, because that's what it looked like. And to learn someone else saw it in the tr same trees was startling. I would never forget, it looked like a chimp, but with the body shape of a man. And it couldn't have been a monkey, because it was too tall. And it was like a caveman from the dinosaur days. It had a piggy type of nose and large black eyes. And it was full of brown hair and it had a human face. But it was also like a chimps at the same time. It's so hard to explain. And that was Brenda. And as you can imagine, that's startling that there are two of us, you know, in this very small area um, in the northwestern town that sees this type of creature. And what I saw, I only saw from mid chest up. But the hair colour is very similar. To this when the light caught it uh, in the shade it looked very very dark it had tanned skin like this one had and this is a very good rendition of what it looked like um, and that was way back in uh, 1984 so I don't know if it surprised you to know that in 2012 there is a researcher in the UK who like myself looks for witnesses and people that have seen the similar type of hominids upright bipedal covered in hair um, and a gentleman named, named Dominic Campion sent me an account from a gentleman called Toner who lives in this area and he had his account on what we all know as the bike pass uh, that live in Salford it's Phillips Park and it's um, attached to the Earl Valley Country Park and it runs past Clifton and up through Berry, and then it carries on so you could either go to say the forest of Boland or uh, across the moors depending on you know what you felt like but this is what he had to say I'm not one for shooting my mouth off or even to exploit or take advantage of the situation but I seen this thing and I was only prepared to talk about it with Dom and it was after a conversation that we had about hominids and I explained to him that I'd seen something very strange in Drinkwater Park it was a Saturday morning in September 2012 and being an avid mountain bike rider or should I say an off-road off cross-country cyclist I would be out most weekends with at the time a good friend of mine who I'll name Dave. We'd venture all over the northwest to get our cycling kicks and on this occasion we stayed local not too far from where I live. We have the Outwood Trail um, at Billings Park and it connects to Drinkwater Park and Clifton Country Park. They're both deer parks, actually, which are linked by trails and paths and offer a good riding. It's not extreme, I might add. Um, and, what, and you can walk it. It's an adaptive for the day, disabled also now. Uh, it wasn't back then. And just general outdoor enjoyment for everyone, really. And I'm sure you know, um, as we're traversing up and down the Outward Trail, it, the embankment's incredibly steep and overgrown and just kind of left rough. Um, and he says, we're on the, you, obviously we're transversing up and down that trail and eventually we hit Waterdale. It's a bit um, more rural out there. And there are a number of trails and loops in that area which come off the main track. So you can, can come off like the places where people normally go. And it was one of, one of those loops off track that I had my first encounter. We were facing in the direction and start of the Outward Trail. And we were almost near 13 Arches, it's called. It's like a local name. And the River Irwell was to our left. When we both fall right onto a single track loop, which rises through fenced off forestry commission land. And this land was overgrown with shrub and bush. Either side of the trail for about 40 yards before taking a sharp right and then an angled left. After carrying on for no more than approximately 10 yards or so, Dave, who was leading, came to a standstill. I slowed down, stopping just behind Dave, and I noticed something in the corner of my right eye. I immediately looked to my right and saw what I can best describe as a very large creature, maybe 20 yards away. And I'm not going to get into the realms of what it wasn't. I would rather just say what I actually saw. It was brown in colour, not dark, but a light 
tan. And although it wasn't square onto me, its head sat on very thick, a broad set of shoulders with no neck, and I couldn't make out any facial detail due to specifics of its dark complexion. It was leaning forward on long arms, not too dissimilar to that, the stance of a gorilla, and I could see the top of its legs and muscular fibers above the undergrowth. This all happened in the space of maybe four seconds before it, it rose slightly on its feet before bounding off in one movement to its right into a thick tree cover. I estimate this thing was easily six, uh, sorry, seven to eight feet tall, maybe more in height. I turned to Dave, who was fiddling with his bike, and quickly asked, Did you see that? Dave shrugged and said, Did I see what? I hesitated and thought, if I actually told him what I'd seen, he'd just take the Michael. And that wasn't something I was prepared to go through for anyone at any price. So I just answered, oh, it must have been a deer. Which he again just shrugged off and thought nothing of it, as the area is full of deer. And they're regularly spotted. So we carried on our way and no more was said about it. And by the time I got home, my mind was racing. I know what I saw, but I don't know what to think. Oh, I didn't know who to tell, or anything for that matter. I just decided to keep it locked down and not let it fester on my mind and just put it out of my head. And two weeks later, as bizarre as it sounded, it happened again. I was alone this time um, around and I was cycling in the same area, but heading towards Dam's Head Lodge. When I stopped to remove some annoying bits and pieces that had gotten caught up in the bike chain set, I was immediately overcome with an uncomfortable, heightened sense of being watched. Approximately 40 yards to my left was a very large, bipedal creature. This thing was standing, listening to its left from behind a tree, staring in my direction before disappearing after a few seconds behind the same tree and undergrowth. It was exactly the same colour. And I estimate its dimensions were the same as the last encounter. I couldn't believe what I was seeing again. And I still can't believe it to this day. This time around, I got straight back on my bike and I sped out of there as quickly as I could. And it's only now, as a result of some heavy prompting from Dominic, that I've decided to share my experiences. I'm not one for fictional storytelling, as the last time I put pen to paper, I was in school uniform. But I do hope that this might prompt more people to come forward. Um, and that would be all the better in my opinion. And I understand where Tony's coming from there. Because it's amazing when you get validation. Like for me, I had to wait about 30 years until Brenda came forward. But each one of these witnesses that comes forward on the Irwell Bella is obviously added validation. Um, and Tony wasn't the only one. It wasn't too long later in 2016... The lady got in touch with me and she said she was looking for somewhere to report something that she'd seen. She'd um, report this experience and when I saw your site in the witness statements, I thought you would want to hear about the strange beast my husband saw last month on the 16th of July 2016. He was golfing at the Ellesmere Golf Course in Worsley. While doing the round, he was on the side of the course where the trees separate the course from the East Lancashire Road. And while he and his friend were playing, they noticed something walking along the edge of the tree line. They thought for a moment it was another golfer. But after about ten minutes, they became aware that this thing was walking with them. And they got the impression that it was stalking or shadowing them in some way. They looked closer and saw that wherever it was, this thing they were looking at was very tall, around about seven feet in height. It was hairy all over the body, and it was human-shaped. They also said it had a barrel chest, and was very large with an odd-shaped head. And it looked like a human, but wider, with hair covering it all over. The way it leaned forward, they felt that it was either very old, or in some sort of pain, or had an infliction. As they looked at it, they heard it making a muttering sound, like something chattering, like the sounds an ape would make. My husband stepped forward and took a step back away, and it, it took a step back away from him, sorry. 
And when he did this, the muttering stopped and it went quiet. My husband's friend walked towards it and it seemed startled and it started to sway from side to side. And they got the impression it was getting agitated. It clapped its hands very loudly and started making grunt, grunting sounds. My husband noticed its hands were very big, almost too big for its arms. They seemed out of proportion in some way. He described the arms and hands almost like a bedpan in comparison to size. He said it then started moving its hands a little like sign language, as if it was gesturing. Then suddenly, they heard a loud wailing coming from another part of the trees. And at that moment, the creature turned and ran away. Again, making this odd grunting sound. And I don't expect you to believe this story, but I swear it's true. Um, my husband and his friend, you know, they're both rational men. But John was as white as a sheet when he came home. And he's played golf around these parts for years and years. So to see this was just shocking for him. He was so shaken up, I thought at first he had come across some trouble, you know, or neither from the estate. And when he explained what had happened, I believed everything he said. I had to make him a sweet drink of tea to calm him down. Um, and that's an incredibly strange account, isn't it, when you think about it? What this gentleman saw was upright, very similar to what myself and Brenda and Tony saw. Completely hair covered. Uh, once again, it's on the Irwell route. And it's ordinary people, you know, going about ordinary things, just either on the bikes or they're walking around and they've got the dog, you know, just everything that you expect. And then it happened again in 2017. Which is, you know, is quite unusual. And as a, you heard me mention before, there is a place called Drinkwater Park in Salford. Um, and it's on mining land. The old age craft pit is there. And there used to be a huge race course down there. And then it, all that's gone now. So there's been lots of replanting, lots of rewilding. It's on the floodplain. But if you follow the path of the Irwell very carefully, it takes you all the way up um, to Holcombe Moor. And we have accounts all along the Irwell. And it also goes all the way down to the Peak District, where we have some of our oldest accounts in the UK and very up-to-date ones as well. Um, so Drinkwater Park is, once again, it's an area that people fish. There's lots of wild foods there. There's, um, it's what I call a, a, like a wild, a green corridor. It's um, like the Lee Valley in Oxfordshire and um, the other Lee Valley in uh, Epping. It's most of the cities and towns in the UK have... Um, a river that runs through them with lots of small streams and tributaries coming off that and it's in kind of in the green belt areas that people are seeing these kind of creatures and Drinkwater Park's just like that it's on the Curzel Vale um, and there's accounts going back of you know running figures back to the 1500s I always put down to Black Douglas he's called down there um, an urban myth the uh, Black Douglas Owls and Drinkwater Park as you can see from the uh, the picture Lots of little narrow paths, but you can go off path. It's quite a, a nice area to be. Um, and this gentleman says, um, there's an area close to my home along the River Irwell that I feel is important, maybe, um, in the ur urban jungle of northwest Britain. And it's tucked away unseen. And there are many little pockets of unused land, and thick with shrubs and trees. And it's left to nature and seldom visited, really. People don't take advantage of it. And as I said, we call these the green corridor areas. And the gentleman said, I was on the Irwell route today. And it was a nice spring morning, so I figured I'd take my son for a walk as we'd be cooped up with all the horrible weather. And now is a good time as I need a chance to walk. The land down there is on a floodplain and it's very wet as it had been raining for the past 48 hours solid. The Irwell was running pretty high and at that point, but I'd had a busy day in town and I just needed to clear my head. So I set up with my young son for an hour's peace and quiet. You know, we have a regular route and we use the path to get in. Um, <clears throat> and then we normally walk our path in the woodland there. We were out for a while in the rain, just enjoying the day. When I noticed out of the corner of my eye a grey figure. And it was up on the bank opposite where I was now standing. I only saw it for a split second and then it was gone. Whatever this thing was, was all one colour. A grey colour moving very quickly away from us. And I was a bit shaken up, trying to work out 
who that could have been up there across the cleared field. I was nervous, but I made my way over to where it had been standing and saw to my shock there was a ditch and that the figure must have been eight foot tall for me to have seen him from my position. As I went to point this ditch out to my son, there was a high, loud wail and the crows sat up in unison above us. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm full of blue. And they were alarming and cawing. My son asked me if I had seen a figure as he said he had seen one too. But on comparing notes, I realised the figure he had seen was darker in colour and much smaller than the very white tall thing I had seen. Did he see the smaller one because they were on a similar eye level? I'm not sure. The crows were still making a ruckus and I was a bit unnerved at seeing something so unusual. And I feel it was time to go and we set off back to the car. Not scared, but a little confused. <coughs> and my adrenaline was rushing. The area itself was off the canal and very wooded. And I found a spot within the trees where there was a circle of pine trees. And in the middle was an oak tree. It just felt like a significant place down there. And, and to be honest, I wasn't scared. Whatever happened that day, I, we really found a bit uplifting. And I will be returning. And I will be going back. And this gentleman describes a grey creature. So very uh, not the same as the one I saw and the, the other people saw. So he describes it as almost grey. But the young lad that was with him saw a darker creature that wasn't that tall. And then you're thinking, well, that's just Salford. So there's just this, you know, little list of accounts around Salford. It's clearly an escape tape or... All valuable, you know, theories that something's got out, or it's maybe a homeless man, or it's something that we've seen a mistake in uh, with fear. Um, but we all seem to be describing a, a creature that's hairy, you know, you've got the hair covered creature that's ape and simian like, and it looks like a man and a caveman combined, and it's completely covered in hair and it has human features. Uh, male genitalia is mentioned, this very long arms and big hands, thick muscular legs. You have the stance like a gorilla as it stands there. And once again, this orangey red hair is reported. So we're talking about different individuals, at least. We have brown hair, reddish coloured hair, grey hair, as we said, very dark brown hair, as Jade's husband saw. Um, so very similar kind of description but it's not the same description so it's clearly more than one individual shall we say we'll use the word individual so we'll just randomly pick another area now and we'll think well yeah you're seeing him there but this you know there must be a reasonable explanation for it isn't there and then i found a lady and she said she was in the forest of boland as most of you will know up there and it's not too far from the top of the year well and there are other accounts around it and she says, I was on a rambling holiday with my husband and we wanted to walk the Dunstan Bridge Tromper Trail. And we were just passing the old working man's club near the start. When I was startled to see a tall, hairy man running to the wood line. And I don't mean man-sized tall. I mean huge, like a half man, half ape. And I was so startled, we returned to the car. When asked, the eyewitness supplied these details. He ran from the small hedgerow near the heavier woods, and I saw his side profile. He was a man with huge shoulders and thick legs, with hair like a monkey. And then we'll pop down to Sherwood, one of our oldest woods, most of you know. And down there we have a lady, and she's coming along the workshop road. Most of you living in that area will recognise that road. And it's one of the first accounts I took actually through Facebook because um, I've always collected accounts from the witnesses and made map them so I know that where these accounts are happening. And this lady's name was Kerry and she said, I wish to report something that I saw when I was driving close to Nottingham a few nights ago and this was reported in 2013. And I think I remember rightly it was November. Uh, I know you don't have a Sherwood Forest on your web page, but I didn't know who else to contact, as there isn't anyone else I feel I can speak to, or, you know, who would hear me out, really. Um, 
So I'm a normal everyday woman and I travel this road often and I saw something that I cannot quite believe. I was heading home to Cookney from work and I was driving along the workshop road. It was still light, about 4.50, and I saw two figures stood to the side of the road as you drive through the, tr the forest. They were just stood within the trees, and I'm going to be honest and say their appearance really scared me. They were really tall and naked and looked like cavemen of some kind. The big one stood about six and a half feet tall and was clearly a male. And I could see his sexual parts. And this male was covered in hair, which was brown in colour. It had no clothing on it at all. And they both had something strange about their appearance. They had weird shaped heads, like deformed skull, very apish, almost like a chimp looking. But the face looked human too, very man-like. The other smaller one was much shorter. And only about three foot tall and had less hair on its body than the adult one. The little one looked the same as the bigger one, just younger. It had a deformed head for a human, but still a human face within it. I don't know how to explain it to you. It's very hard to put into words. I don't know what I saw, but it's strange. What they looked like to me was father and son, or an adult and a child. They were all hair covered. And they're just standing there using the trees to hide at the side of the road. I wonder if they were just waiting to cross over. How can these people hide when so many people visit this area? It just doesn't make sense. They looked for all the world like wild people. Or how you will imagine we once looked. And I'm too scared to tell anyone in case they laugh. And I can't bring myself to tell anyone else. As I told my husband... Um, and he said that they'd section me under the Mental Health Act. So, you know, I don't really know where to go with this account. And then we have a very similar kind of account, I would say. It shows some of the habits that people experience when they're out there, like this kind of wood knocking that people talk about, or howls and whoops and noises that people don't recognise who've lived in the UK for a very long time. So we'll go over to um, Weirdale Forest, which is in the northeast of England. And some people call it Kilda, or Kilda, I think it's pronounced. And this happened in 2011. And it was September, and there was a group up there from Bishop Auckland, and they are a paranormal group. They like to do EVP sessions and hobby boxes and that kind of thing. And they're planning a four-night stay in Weirdale Forest commonly known as Kilholt Woods, due to the nearby Kilholt Mine. And these areas are both classed as haunted, and many local tales tell a, a screaming woman and a tall dark figures that haunt the woods. So on the first night, the group heard a single loud knock off to the west. And then hoping for more ghostly interaction, they asked the usual question, but received no more knocks. At the end of the night, they settled into bed, and after about an hour, they heard a blood-freezing scream, as he described it. They got up and had a look around, but didn't see anything unusual. The next night, they started the EVP session and received nothing. They decided to investigate the area where the knock came from the night before. And after a bit of a walk, they reached the area, and they once again knocked on a nearby stump. And to their shock, they heard a reply in the distance, to the north. They were all happy about this, and so they knocked again and received a knock to the south. And to their horror, they then realised they were surrounded by knocking, coming from all around them, which got closer and closer, and they were terrified. So it's by this time, it's 2am, and they're ready to leave. So in agreement, they all went back to camp to pack up. But the knocking didn't stop. On the walk back, they were plagued by it knocking coming from around them in the trees and at this point the lead guy who was out front turned white based and said he saw a tall uh, let me get it right a tall dark hairy human shape walking off into the wood the knock continued as they packed up and left um and i asked if he'd go into more detail but he really wasn't happy sharing it with me at all 
uh, he just said that it was this really tall, dark, hairy thing, and it walked off. But he, you know, specifically said hair. So knocking on trees and whooping and that kind of thing. They, you know, they did get um, might not a little bit more than they hoped for, but they did get interaction that night. And the next one is Seven Oaks, and this to me is absolutely wonderful because it's a similar kind of place to where I live. It's a uh, what well, once was a new town. So on the edge of it, especially back in the 70s, you've got uh, green fields and, you know, green land that can't be built on. And a kid's dream, absolute dream. I mean, I, I know it was like that for me growing up. And we've got a young gentleman who got in contact. We found each other, actually. And um, he told, said to me, do you want to hit it happen to me? You know, that kind of same similar thing with Charmaine. Charmaine's been on uh, Ben's show before, so most people know her story from Carmi Lee in Scotland. But this was another person that I found who saw something very strange when they were a young child that had stayed with them. And it made them, you know, research what they saw, how could it be there, you know, what does it eat, the usual questions that we ask ourselves. Um, and this was in October of 1978. And the gentleman said, I lived in Seven Oaks, Kent, in a street with a series of houses, which was laid out in an oval. The street itself had around 40 houses or so, and then it was fields to the left and countryside and woodlands for a few miles at the back. The countryside was pretty thick in places with pine forests and oaks and birches, and it was quite diverse. So I guess you could say I was on the outskirts of town. I was 10 at the time, and it was Sunday night. And I was waiting to watch how the West was won. And it was pretty cloudy and foggy and still night and that I can remember. And I went to my kitchen to make a cup of tea. And we didn't have double glazing at the time. It was one sheet glass window with metal partitions. So when we had to cook or boil a kettle, it was cold. The condensation would occur on the glass. And I waited in the kitchen for the kettle to boil, and out of the corner of my eye, a face appeared in my bottom pane. And at first, I thought it was just my reflection. And then I looked again closely, and this time the face pressed itself hard against the window. And it was a sort of chimp and human-style face. It was youngish, I would say quite young. I pretended I didn't see it, but I was absolutely terrified. I left the room and sat down motionless, and I couldn't say a word. So I decided at the time to draw it, and I did so straight away. As an addition to this, the face resembled that of a chimp, with a short snout and black brown eyes, but with human-type hair everywhere. And then it wasn't, I think it was around about 11 years later, in 1987, the second counter happened, and I was in my late teens by then, early 20s. We used to go to a hill that's called One Tree Hill up there. And, you know, we'd meet all our friends and we'd have um, a fire and, you know, just a fun night. So on this particular night, it was quite clear, but a little cold. And my friend and I arrived ahead of the other party to start a fire. And we parked the car and made our way to the bench, which was about a five-minute walk or so. My friend started gathering wood from the left side. And I started from the right um, I heard a deep, very deep growl. I dismissed it as a cow or a sheep from the valley below. But then a couple of minutes later, I heard it again, and this time deeper and more defined. Whatever it was on my side, and it was coming my way, it had a real depth to it that gave the impression that it was something of a significant size. I placed my firewood on the fire, and at the same time, my friend joined me. And just as we did so, the grunt sounded again. And it was coming from another part of the tree line. And my friend said, run. And as I ran, I looked back and I caught sight of what looked like a bipedal creature. And its face was illuminated in the tree line and it was huge. Now, the next day, less than a mile and a half, mi one and a half miles away from the area, a lorry driver driving through a remote road said he had nearly hit an orangutan at 6.30am in the morning. 
and the driver stated that it was orangey red in colour. This made the local newspaper that same week, and I just stayed silent and didn't tell anybody. And it seems to be that wherever we go in the countryside, anywhere in the UK, whether it be close to towns or the middle of nowhere, there are accounts of these tall, hairy, bipedal creatures. So now we'll go to Swannington, um, to Grace Dupira. Most people will know that. And this witness is called Emma Adam. And she said, I want to report something that happened to me and my sister a few years ago now in 2013. We still don't know to this day what we saw, and I don't have a name for it, and nothing on Google is matching up with it at all. We were driving along Limby Hall Lane in Swannington in Leicestershire, and this is just part of the Priory area, and we decided on this route as it was new for us, and we wanted to walk the dogs somewhere different for a change. And my sister and I, um, she lived in Eastwood, Nottingham at the time, so she came over and slept at mine at Whittock. And we were out on the lane and it was getting darkish, but there was still plenty enough light to walk the two dogs. And I would say it was roughly around February, about 10, 11 p.m. And my sister was the driver and I was the passenger and our dogs were in the back. And we went down the lane and a man came out from the fields with three dogs and crossed the road into the woods to the side. And we thought nothing of it. We stopped the car to let them pass as it's a single road and you can't turn your car around until you reach the rest stops, which you, we call pull-ins. As the man passed us, we went a few pull-ins along the road, but it still wasn't wide enough to turn the car. And we decided to just keep going until we could turn around safely and head back. So we carried on along Limby Hall Lane for some time. And then in the distance and in the light from the car headlights, we could see something was walking across the road. And it was walking quite strangely. It was very tall, and I would say at least seven to eight feet tall. And it looked injured as it walked across the road slowly with a limp and an arched back. It was very wide and all black. And as the headlight didn't reach it properly, we couldn't get a really good look at the face. And I said to my sister, stop the car. What the is that? And she said, I've no idea. And she pressed her horn, and to our horror, this thing stopped in the middle of the road, and it turned and stared at the car. And I told my sister to put the main beam on, and she did this, and we were still not close enough to light it, all of it up. And the only thing that did light up was the eyes, really. It was reflecting not just two, but many eyes. This thing had multiple reflective eyes. It just stood there in the road for ages looking at the car. And then with that, it walked off. And I believed it had a limp. And the way it walked, it looked like it limped into those woods and it was just gone. I mean, obviously, at this point, we're both scared to die. Um, we fenced a central lock in and we couldn't turn the car around. And we had to go forward towards where this thing had stood. And as we went past the point where it went into the woods, the road was pitch black and my sister floored it. Now, I'm telling people this, they don't believe you. And I don't suppose it will until it happens to them. And we Googled to find this creature, but we can't find anything that matches it at all. So, I mean, I don't really know what to say. But I have asked around and I asked as many people as I can think of. And one girl told me that... Um, her uncle had a strange experience with something that he saw on the grass verge one night. It's almost exactly the same as mine when he tells it, but he saw it opposite Grace Drew Priory. He saw a crouched, dark figure. He couldn't see the face um, as the figure was so hunched over with its arched back. It was coming towards him, almost heading for his car. And this was at the junction opposite the ruins. He turned left and sped off quickly towards Loughborough. And now he doesn't drive that area anymore. So, as you can see, that's a number of accounts <coughs> from all across the UK. And would it surprise you to tell you that there are around 400 of these people who have seen upright, hairy, bipedal, hair-covered, man-looking apes. 
And they come in all names. They call people report him as the ape man or the man ape or the gorilla man or the upright bear or the human faced wolf. Even um, the ape eight face shuck was one of them that came on <coughs> so if that's okay with you i'm going to bring it to an end now and thank you for listening to me and listen to the witnesses accounts so until next time thank you very much good night